layout space, and I'm sitting right next to Howie Su. Do I pronounce your name right? Um, as accurate as people could ever get to. Non-Chinese people, okay. Is it Chinese or? Yes. Okay. So you are a long-time employee at VMware, and you recently uh, have left the company. One and you, year ago. And one year ago, and you uh, you are working for uh, for Big Switch now, which is a stealth company, and they are announcing some really cool techniques in the future. Uh, besides that, we also saw that VMware is really interesting in networking, and they bought Nisera to get some uh, some 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 knowledge in. Um, what's the real problem of the customer? Why why does everybody bother about networking? I think the I think the problem for networking is so obvious after VMware revolutionized on the server side because basically you want to solve one problem. That one problem is anything, anywhere, anytime with any quality of service. You can solve this problem in many, many different ways. Nesera is trying to solve the problem one way. VMware has been trying to solve this problem for, for many years. And you have seen many other networking companies have been solving the similar problem. So, um, so that's the sort of the landscape. Okay, so uh, when we talk about particular techniques like VXLAN and transporting a layer, layer 2 network over a layer 3 network, uh, that, that's, that's one thing people want to be able to, uh, to deploy new virtual machines in different data centers, even if they are on other subnets or on other physical layer 3 networks. What, what, what else are problems that customers are encountering? Well, so there are a number of issues. The, uh, VXLAN is trying to solve this very problem I was talking about. You can run any worker at any time. But there are more than just uh, layer 2 connectivity. There is a layer 3 connectivity. There is a layer 4 to 7. There is a firewall. There is, you know, all sorts of networking problems. It's not just uh, giving you the layer 2 is enough. It's the layer 2 to layer 7, the entire stack. So what, it, what what we've seen in the keynote this morning is that the V-Shield appliance comes with 10 virtual network adapters in, in the future version instead of two to create more DMZ and more different types of networking uh, you're speaking about. Do you think that's, that's a sign that people are thinking about enhancing possibilities, network possibilities within a vSphere environment? Well, yes. I mean, for, for the very reason that Paul Moritz and then uh, Pat have been talking about this morning, uh, four years ago it was 25 uh, percent of virtualization, now it's 60 percent. When it was 25 percent, virtual machines uh, use case is the corner case, now it's 60 percent. So now people really have to worry about, okay, for my majority of the workload, how do I protect it? How do I make sure that the layer 4 to 7 services are delivered correctly to the right workloads? That's the sort of the problem people pinned it on before and then now people cannot pin it on anymore because majority of the workloads are running on virtual, uh, are running on virtualization stack. So, and what's the next big thing? If, if everything is running in the cloud and even my, for instance, my, 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 my phone system is running in the cloud and all the, vo all the voice over IP connections are going through it, I need something like quality of service or, or something to, to give a higher priority to, to important traffic. I, I think I think that's one aspect. I, I think that's one way to look at things. You know, part of the reason that uh, Big Switch is working on something very cool, in my opinion, is um, our customers have been consistently told us that VMware or maybe even Nasera or other companies are have been solving s certain problems. That problem is on the virtual land. You know, the, using the overlay technology. But me as a customer, I still have to hire CCIEs, I still have to networking admins to architect, to troubleshoot, to manage this. It's not like once you have the overlay network, I can just uh, get rid of all the, all the CCIEs. And, I mean, I still need to have, you know, design and architect and manage this network. How do I get this part, of, you know, the holistically, uh, holistic problem solved? That's really the challenge, meaning that not just the virtual land, but also physical land and the step the next step would be virtual and the physical together. That's sort of the challenge that people are facing. So what you're saying is that when I'm implementing vCloud Director, I don't need a sysadmin to deploy my virtual machines anymore. And when I'm using the software from Big Switch, I don't need a Cisco specialist to create network connections anymore? No, actually not, not, not quite. The way we look at the things is the CCIEs are equipped with certain tools. That's the sort of the tool that Cisco uh, type of land have been providing them for the last 10, 15 years. That tool set is sort of, you know, 
it's working for a certain use case, but it's not quite working for some other use case. What we are doing is to complement those CCIEs with additional tool sets, additional things, and without asking them to change things completely, and just give them additional tools so that they can do things a lot more flexible way. Great, great. I have one concluding question. When I move a virtual machine, which is running in a layer two network, over layer three to another data center, what happens to the gateway? And you as a network specialist must, must give me a, a good answer on that because I cannot figure out when the virtual machine is running in another part of the network and the gateway still has the old address, the, the traffic will still be relayed through the old data center. How do you cope with that problem? Right, right. I, mean, I think a gateway is just one of the many potential issues here. It's not just a, you know, a networking gateway, it may be application gateway, it may be application, um, some servers you want it to go through. Now you move over to there, how do you signal the rest of the stack that, okay, I moved, now I need to take a different path. So that's, that's what I was saying, that solving layer two problem is difficult, but that's even, even if people solve that problem, there is another whole stack of problem people yet to solve. You know, a big switch, part of the thing you know, we're doing unique is, we're not just trying to solve this problem alone, we're trying to work with the whole ecosystem. We open up our API, we get people to write up port applications or change application or tweak the application slightly so that they get a right signal. And that's sort of the uniqueness, so that it's not just, okay, I'm building one vertical solution, and then that solution will work, but what happens with with other stack, other applications, they need to be notified somehow, somewhere, right? Okay, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much, Eric.